Hey guys, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So I want to take you to a story today that is a pretty familiar story, but I want to give you a little bit of a different backstory to it that I think will help it mean some more to us. So you go to Mark chapter 6, and there is the story of Jesus sleeping on the boat. Many of you are familiar with this. So you go to Mark chapter 4, uh, about 35 to 41, just the last part of this right here. Jesus and the disciples are in a ship, and it says in verse 37, there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full and he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow i can just picture jesus there in the midst of a storm just sleeping there's a pillow there he is comfy and they awake him and saith unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So many of you are familiar with that story. Now in Matthew, it does use the word tempest. It says there's a great tempest. Either way, whether it's a tempest or a storm, whatever, it is something very unexpected and violent that comes up and it's something that they were not expecting. And yet Jesus seems to be calm during the whole thing. Well, as you're going through this, many of you are probably thinking of, at least I was thought of this as soon as I read this story, the hymn, Master the Tempest is Raging. It is a powerful song. It is an intense song, and it's got some great principles with it. So if you go to hymn number 105, you go all the way down on your Gospel Library app, you see the person who wrote the text and the person who wrote the music. Now, the text was written by someone named Mary Ann Baker, and then the music was written by an individual named H.R. Palmer. Now, several years ago, the text Tabernacle Choir, they had a blog with this, and they did a little bit of a story that helped you understand the backstory to this song, Master of the Tempest is Raging, which is built around this story in Mark chapter 4. But it also gets you a little bit into the life of Mary Ann Baker and why the text of this story should mean a little bit more to us. It says, in 1874, Dr. H. R. Palmer, who is again the one who wrote the music for this, he requested several songs from Mary Ann Baker for Sunday school lessons under the theme for the year, which was Christ Still the Tempest. After Baker completed the text, Palmer set it to music and published it in his Songs of Love for the Bible School during the same year. Events in Baker's own life mirrored the turbulence of the scriptural passage. According to a passage in the book, Our Latter-day Hymns, The Stories and the Messages by Karen Lynn Davidson, which is a wonderful uh, book if you get a chance to look through that. It gives a lot of backstory to our hymns. The author says, Mary Ann Baker was left an orphan when her parents died of tuberculosis. She and her sister and brother lived together in Chicago. When her brother was stricken with the same disease that had killed their parents, the two sisters gathered together the little money that they had and sent him to Florida to recover. But within a few weeks, he died and the sisters did not have sufficient money to travel to Florida for his funeral, nor to even bring his body back to Chicago. Well, of this trial, Baker said, I became wickedly rebellious at this dispensation of divine providence. That's an interesting way of phrasing. I was very frustrated with God. God. I said in my heart that God did not care for me or mine, but the master's own voice stilled the tempest in my unsanctified heart and brought it to the calm of a deeper faith and a more perfect trust. In an October 1984 general conference talk titled Master of the Tempest is Raging, Howard W. Hunter stated that all of us have seen some sudden storms in our lives. Again, the storms are things that just come up. We may or may not expect them. A few of them, though temporary, like these on the Sea of Galilee, can be violent and frightening and potentially destructive. As individuals, as families, as communities, as nations, even as a church, which is interesting because you look at the last couple years of our lives, the storms that have come up and the things that have been just frightening and potentially destructive. President Hunter gave this back in 1984, how prophetic this was for our lives today. Even as a church, he said, we have had sudden squalls arise and have made us ask one way or another, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And one way or another, we always hear in the stillness after the storm, why are you so fearful and how is it that ye have have no faith. Well, the third verse acknowledges the peace that follows the biblical storm or the metaphorical storms in our lives with the opening lines, Master, the terror is over, the elements sweetly rest. 
Following each verse is the fundamental message of the hymns chorus, which is peace be still. And so I love that that it kind of gives me a background. Again, you've got the, the scriptural account of this and you've got this wonderful hymn that provides us an opportunity to understand a little bit more on why these lyrics to this hymn should mean a little something to us, especially those of us who have these storms come up in our lives, whether they be individual or familial or even in our church. You know, that happens a lot of times or in our world. There's just these storms happen to come up, these unexpected things. And as we approach them with an eye of faith rather than an eye of, like Marianne Baker said, uh, a spirit of wicked rebelliousness at the dispensation of divine providence. If we look at it with the eye of faith and understanding that the Savior is staying calm through this, and if we can put faith in him and trust in him, we as well can be able to appreciate the phrase, peace be still during the storms in our lives. I'm grateful for that story and I know that it is true. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks as always for sharing. We love that you do that. If you haven't already, go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.